I'm working in my journal here and you can see the one page is a little bit wrinkly from the painting I did on the other side. Um, I kind of like that this journal is just sort of, it's my place where I just sort of play and let go and I don't really care too much about what I'm painting and that sort of those thoughts help me to just be more free and I usually end up liking the paintings that I do in this little journal sometimes more than the ones I do on canvas so they have a lot of freedom to them because I feel like I can just really let go on this you know thin paper that's just in a little journal so I'm just adding you know sort of scribbling on some color I'm working on both pages at the same time and this is kind of just my background layer I'm not thinking too much about what what I'm doing, where I'm putting the colors. I'm just trying to fill up some of the white space. And for this, you know, you might want to play with acrylic inks or indica inks if you want to use that instead of the watercolors. It's totally up to you. I really just like to get some color down so that I have a place to begin. And now I'm going to go ahead and tap in my dots with my fingers for the eyes of both characters. And I kind of like sometimes doing, you know, the dots of eyes for both characters and then sometimes the the cheeks. You know, it's always my same process with these characters where I usually use the blue or green for the eyes and then the red for cheeks. And sometimes I'll wait before I add lips because I might want to turn these into animals instead of some sort of people. But I like working on both pages at the same time when I don't see any kind of character in the paint. And that way it kind of gives me, you know, two options. And it also helps me feel more free with these pieces because if I mess up on one, then I can go ahead and work on the other. Um, and so I just sort of started in on this first character here. I'm not really sure what I'll end up making him into. I kind of see some kind of pointed ear in the orange that's up on the, the upper right. But I'm just sort of penciling in his eyes first and giving him a little definition. And I'm working pretty quickly here so that I don't think too much about what I'm doing. I always like to add some kind of eyebrow because it seems to give the characters more personality so I can kind of see maybe where the, the face shape should be next. And I try to not be too definite with these characters. So you can see how I've just sort of scribbled in his hair. And again, it's one of those things where, you know, a cat doesn't necessarily have hair like that on his head. Um, but I really like to play between the you know, making it a human and making it some sort of an animal. And so, of course, it's whatever you dream up, there's no right or wrong way. Um, you can give your characters whatever sort of embellishments or character traits you want. And because I'm really liking um, the shape of this character's face, his, his expression, his shoulders, I'm just going to go ahead and take some of the water-soluble oil pastel and sort of just scribble that in so I have some of a background to kind of make my character pop a bit. And I just went over that crown because I felt like it was almost taking away from my character. Um, I felt like he didn't really need this extra embellishment to tell the viewer who he was. Um, I feel like, you know, sometimes if I'm just not you know, I'll add a crown so that it'll get me to a next point because sometimes the shape of a character's head I'm not liking. So I'll add a crown so that I kind of like the shape of their head a little bit more. But then you can easily, you know, paint over it or just use the water soluble oil pastel if it's in pencil or pa like chalk pastel and just kind of go over it so that you can create a whole new character. And now I really like the black that I've added around his head and I'm kind of treating this a bit like a coloring book where I sort of sketched in the character's features first with my pencil and then now I'm just sort of coloring him in and giving him a little more dimension and a little more um, personality with, you know, the thick black ears 
Um, you could, of course, he would look very different if you would just even give him dark hair instead of yellow hair. Um, or if you gave him bear ears instead of cat ears, if you got rid of the whiskers, um, you could give him a fatter nose and make him into a lion. You can kind of just see how these characters can really evolve based on what you're feeling. So I really wasn't liking that green that I put there. That was just something that I would try. I thought I would try. So because it's the watercolors, that's the other great thing is that you can kind of just smudge them out a little bit. And now I'm using my Payne's Gray Calligraphy ink and the bamboo writing stick to just add some words. And you can see how it's just very fluid um, with that calligraphy ink and the bamboo stick. It really creates those thin sort of letters. And the one thing with that is that it's if you do mess up and not like your words, you might want to let them dry before you go ahead and paint over them. Um, unless you used, say if I didn't like my word dreaming and I went ahead and added black on top of that, that would be fine. But if you added white, it would just turn gray and be a muddy mess. So the calligraphy ink is a little bit more, you know, you have to have confidence to use it and at least not be afraid of making a mistake. But with these journal pages, um, I just feel a lot more free with them. So... And if I do mess up or add a word that I don't really like, I just, you know, go ahead and sometimes leave it anyways, because that's the beauty of these pages is it's all about just being quick and letting yourself ex be expressive and not judging it too much. So now I'm just adding, you know, extra detail to this character's eyes. And I love using the Stabilo pencil for that, but you might want to just use a regular pencil or a piece of charcoal. I also use a pit pen sometimes. And for these pages, you can use a Sharpie. Sometimes Sharpies, um, they bleed whenever I put a top coat on. So if you're not using a top coat, you could definitely use a Sharpie, pet, Sharpie marker for these two. Those are kind of fun to just sketch with as well. So I'm kind of just making, you know, this this character into a flower slash lion, kind of just going with it. I'm not really happy with where he is right now, but that's why I just keep adding more and more layers. And I want to get his eyes to a point where I at least like his eyes. So I can kind of from there see where I want or where this character wants to go. Sometimes I feel like it's the character that's directing me rather than really me thinking too much about it. And little by little, I just try to get rid of what I don't like and keep what I do like. So I was not really liking those little flower petals around you know, the outside of his face. So I'm just gonna go in and cover those up the way I did in the other painting. A lot of times, I love working with the two side by side like this too, because one usually informs the other. So I, I repeat what I liked in the first painting. And I do that with all of my paintings, whether they're on canvas or whatever. If I end up liking something, I try to repeat that again in another painting, especially when I'm stuck. I was kind of stuck with like not liking this character and not liking those flower petals on its head. And so by going back and using the same color, that beautiful blue that I liked before, and using it in the same way to cover up what I wasn't liking in the background and to give it some colored background, that brought me to another place again where I am starting to like this, this little line again. So I'm just going to keep adding some more layers and adding a little more color and seeing where this line leads me next. 32 feet per second per second accelerating each earthly projection the quantity g is the mother of invention of aeronautic feats too many to mention like oh, Buzz Aldrin on the moon oh, Marco Fuhr and his balloon oh, and the brothers right these pioneers of flight they're engineers, they're lovers and they're loons Oh. Astronauts to be 
study your physics and don't forget to dream of the planets you visit like Buzz Aldrin on the moon Mokofir in his balloon And the brothers right Who gave up making bikes They're engineers, they're lovers And they're loons They're engineers, they're lovers And they're loons They're the engineers and lovers And they're loons